Hey guys, welcome to some exclusive, never before seen gameplay of me playing the Interceptor with a sniper rifle. So this is some more gameplay coming out of the Stockholm trip that happened in December. As I'm part of the EA Game Changers, EA flew me out to Stockholm, sorted out the hotel and all that, and we were given a day to play a build for Anthem for about six hours. So this video was made possible by EA Game Changers. There will be more gameplay going out on the channel in the next coming week, so do make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also there is a giveaway for the channel going on at the moment. Win a standard edition copy of Anthem for the platform of your choosing. All of the details are in the comments below and it's super straightforward to enter. Now let's go over the abilities that I was using for this mission. So for this mission, I had a focus more on the weapons which we'll be talking about in this gameplay, but I had the plasma star equipped the same as the first mission. So these are four shurikens that you can throw out in quick succession. Really good for long range battle, really good for burst damage too. And then we of course have the cluster mines, which are fairly straightforward. You throw them on the ground. If they are thrown at a target, they detonate and do damage, but after a certain amount of time they explode on their own. But the focus really goes on to the two weapons I had. I had the sniper rifle, which you can see on screen now, but also a maxman rifle, which is just more of a single shot high damage weapon. So I have two very high fidelity weapons going on in this mission. And that's what I was very curious to try out in this gameplay, how the weapons feel in this game as opposed to the abilities. And really it took a while to get used to both of these weapons to try and land those shots. But after a certain amount of time, as you'll see as we go into the gameplay, I got a lot better at being able to hit my shots. And in a game that is very javelin and ability focused and all that, I'm very happy with how the weapons feel in this build. So to go over each of the weapons of my experience, you have the heavy pistol, which I didn't actually get to use at all. I know Willis did play a lot with this. It's kind of like a hand cannon. And he said that it was really, really strong and really, really good. He didn't want to put it down. So if you want to talk to him about that, that'd be grand. You have the shotgun, which is fairly easy to explain. You have the sniper rifle and the maximum rifle, which you're seeing in this gameplay. You also have the machine pistol, which was in the last bit of gameplay from the Lost Arcanist mission, which you saw a brief glimpse of. Kind of like an SMG in a lot of cases. Very small, quick fire, but doesn't quite have the accuracy of maybe a hand cannon. An assault launcher, which again, fairly easy to explain. An auto cannon, which I didn't quite get to use. And then you have the grenade launcher and the LMG, which only the Colossus can use, nobody else can. So do look at some of Arx's gameplay if you want to see some of that. But ultimately I wanted to talk about how the gunplay felt. It felt really strong, honestly. I do kind of focus on this a little bit too much as you saw from the gameplay last week. It was a lot of use of the weapons and not so much the abilities. But I think that comes from an Overwatch maybe background from my Myself. Like Dato highlighted in his video, you get your abilities on such a small cooldown that you often don't really utilize them as much as you'd want to. So that's kind of a learning curve that I feel a lot of players are going to have to go through. If I've been really nitpicky with the weapons, the shotgun, and to an extent the interceptor melee kind of lacked that initial un. Of course, this game still is in development, so all of this is subject to change. But one of the feedbacks that I gave was when you're in close and personal with a shotgun and you shoot somebody in the face, you kind of expect them to go flying back or to see that initial impact right but there was a lot of cases where I shot them you saw the health go down and they would just kind of fall to the ground awkwardly so this was a little bit similar with the interceptor melee but this just might be the interceptor right we've seen really good examples of the colossus using big weapons blowing up the enemies and them going absolutely flying and you can see the impact and feel the impact when you're playing it but it just felt a little bit amiss in some of the shotgun and interceptor melee play but again that's me being very nitpicky and that was some of the feedback that I gave to the developers when I was there now I want to talk about the specific build and stuff as we're seeing it on screen. So because I had a sniper rifle and a maximum rifle, I was able to fight from distance. And you could already see big differences between the playstyle I had last week where I played with a machine pistol and a shotgun and ran in very close fought the enemies in close quarters and used the interceptor's agile abilities to close that distance, get in and punch them in the face. But you're seeing how that playstyle is just non-existent with this gameplay because the weapons that I have changed my playstyle. And even when you're looking at some of the abilities, it really works in that favor too. So I was honestly really happy to see that even just equipping different weapons that had that impact changed your playstyle and how you wanted to seek out different ways of playing. Instead of flying at the face of the enemy, you can see me trying to find nice areas that I can perch at up with a sniper rifle to try and fight the enemies from a distance. The maximum rifle is good from a long to medium range, but every time that an enemy got really close to me, I actually used my agileness to get away. This is emphasized as well with the abilities that I had. The plasma star has such a long reach and effectively no drop off that you can throw those stars from a distance and still do a good amount of damage. The cluster mines, I really struggle to get effective use out of them, but you can see as the gameplay goes on that I get much better at being able to use them. But there wasn't many occasions where the enemies were grouped up that I could throw it. But when I 
did get those opportunities, I did definitely get the chance to use them. I saw the IGN guys using it as more of a burst ability to put on tanks, just literally throwing it at them and having the grenades blow up at their feet, which is something that I should have definitely tried, but just failed to. As I said, we only played for about six to eight hours, so we did get all the time in the world. There's a lot of stuff that I would have done differently. As level five or six during this mission, I believe, but you can see how already after a couple more hours of playing since the last mission, how I'm using the dash much more effectively, being able to use it to get close to an enemy to melee him or to be able to dash out of incoming damage just making myself really hard to hit. And also when you are low on shields, being able to move around quickly does increase the recharge rate of your shields. So if you're low on shields, start moving around like crazy and you'll start replenishing them a lot quicker. Again, something that I didn't know at the time. Of course, the big weakness that I have with this build is when I'm fighting uh, one of the big scar bosses that I can't really find an avenue to get in there closer to sort of tear him up. Much like the first bit of gameplay, this was also on the hard difficulty, so I was struggling in a lot of cases. But you can see how I'm aiming for the weak points on the scar boss, trying to blow up the fire canisters on his back, or just trying to keep my distance as much as possible, because in close quarters, he's going to win all of the time. Up until I get my ultimate and then just use that in a lot of cases. For the most part, I used my ultimate as a keep myself alive as opposed to using it to try and kill enemies or bosses. But in this mission, I didn't use it an awful lot either. Probably should have used it more than I did. I also wanted to say that a good portion of this mission, as you're seeing, is in a dungeon. And even then, this build of having a sniper rifle marksman keep your distance kind of approach still works in enclosed areas. And the level design for the indoor areas is actually really, really good. There was a concern that you go inside, you can't really fly around as much. You don't really have the way that you can use your mobility but honestly it's still quite good and it presents its own challenges that made it really fun too. I did want to highlight that at this point we did fight different factions other than the Scars. Of course both of these missions that we've shown you have had Scars in them. We fought other people but I don't want to necessarily say who. You can experience that for yourself but don't worry it's not just fighting Scars from level 1 to 5 or anything like that. And that's everything that I wanted to go over. Again I will let this mission play out. If you do have any questions there's going to be a strong chance that I'll be streaming as this gameplay goes live twitch.tv forward slash ryan central you can find it in the comments below you can ask me questions there or if i'm offline you can just ask me in the comments and i'll be sure to answer them as i said more gameplay still to come and i can't wait to show you guys it take care and i'll see you soon Got rid of all the scars. Not done yet.
They've got that stolen Arcanist machinery hooked up to a Shaper artifact. Let's yeah. stop them before it goes volatile. the relic. Shield of General Tarsus. Were those scars deliberately trying to force a Shaper artifact to create scorpions? Maybe? That's so strange. They normally just scavenge. I'll put it on my report and, um, <clears throat> thank you, Freelancer. This was a huge help to the Sentinels and to the fort. Nice working with you two. Yes. Well, maybe we'll work together again sometime. Maybe. See you around, Brand. <laughs> 